Good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm going to talk about the biggest mysteries that exist in the universe today. So have you ever looked out at the night sky and wondered what lies out there beyond the stars and the galaxies and the planets? Scientists have been doing this for centuries and we have made a lot of progress in our understanding of the universe in the past hundred or so years. In fact, since the beginning of the 20th century, we have made enormous progress in our understanding of the universe and the laws of nature. Uh, our understanding of science has increased significantly. We have all this technology today that we take for granted, technology that would seem like magic just a century ago. So we, uh, we tend to feel that we have everything figured out. And yet the fact is that we understand very little actually about the universe. The first mystery, the first great cosmic mystery I want to speak about is the mystery of dark matter and dark energy. When we look at the universe, we see all these stars and galaxies and nebulae and pulsars and quasars and it's a beautiful, bright, glittering, colorful universe. The truth is that everything we see out there, all this light that comes out from the cosmos, represents only 5% of the mass of the universe. 95% of the universe is dark, it's invisible. It interacts only gravitationally. It does not interact with light or any form of electromagnetic radiation and it is about 25-26% of the mass of the universe. There is an even more mysterious force out there. It's called dark energy. It's responsible for the accelerating expansion of the universe. It uh, counteracts the force of gravity. And this mysterious energy, this dark energy, it consists about 70% of the mass of the universe. Okay, the big, next big mystery is the mystery of quantum mechanics. So quantum theory is one of the most successful theories in science that we have. Quantum theory describes the universe and its particles at the ultra microscopic scale. Quantum mechanics is about the behavior of extremely small ultra microscopic, hyper microscopic, subatomic particles. Mysterious. Uh, it's one of the most successful theories we have. Uh, every Almost all the technology we have today is based on quantum mechanics, whether it is semiconductors, whether it is laptops, whether it's computers or mobile phones or, or, or telecommunications, fiber optics, all of this is based on quantum mechanics and technologies that emerge out of quantum mechanics. So we know how to use it, but we don't know what it's telling us. There are certain extremely counterintuitive phenomena in quantum mechanics. For instance, a particle can be in a state of, in multiple states at the same time until it is observed. A particle can even be in multiple places at the same time before an observation is made. A particle can tunnel through a barrier that classical physics would forbid it to cross. Then there is the uh, inherent uncertainty when we are trying to measure the, uh, the position and the momentum of a particle simultaneously. And uh, there is the phenomenon called entanglement in which two particles are entangled, which means that their physical properties are correlated even if they are light years apart. These incredibly strange properties and phenomena of quantum mechanics raise, make us question the, the, uh, our understanding of reality itself. And to explain quantum mechanics, various physicists have come up with various interpretations of quantum mechanics, such as the Copenhagen interpretation, uh, the many worlds interpretation, uh, Bohmian mechanics, which is a uh, hidden variables theory, and so on. And yet, none of these interpretations are universally accepted or experimentally verified thus far. So we don't know what quantum mechanics means, and we don't know how it actually works. That, and, and yet, we are able to use it in technology, gravity. Gravity is some, is, it's the force that makes apples fall from trees. It's the force that makes the moon go around the earth and planets go around stars. So it's a force we all know very well. We, have all, we all experience it all the time. And yet it is one of the least understood forces of all. The best theory that we have of gravity is general relativity, Einstein's theory of general relativity, uh, which uh, this theory tells us that so that the fabric of the universe is not three-dimensional, but it's four-dimensional. It's called space-time. Three dimensions of, of space and one dimension of time together in a fabric of space-time. General relativity tells us that uh, the, the presence of mass curves the fabric of space-time. And the curvature of space-time tells mass how to move. So it's an extremely well-tested theory. So in, in general relativity, time is relative. And space, space is curved. 
In quantum mechanics, time is absolute and space is smooth, so extremely incompatible. Coming up with a quantum theory of gravity could certainly, it, it could certainly throw much more light on the big mysteries of dark matter and dark energy. So this is one of the biggest mysteries out there. Next, please. The next big uh, cosmic mystery is grand. Is it's the quest for a grand unified theory. A grand unified theory is a theory that physicists have been searching for for a long time. It's about unifying the four forces of nature, finding a single framework that describes them all, and finding a relation between all the four forces. What are the four forces of nature? We spoke about gravity. Then we have the electromagnetic force, the strong nuclear force, and the weak nuclear force. Gravity is described by general relativity. Uh, the electromagnetic force is described by Maxwell's equations, it's, uh, which, which uh, unify electricity and magnetism into a single phenomenon. Then we have uh, the strong nuclear force that is responsible for uh, the, the binding of, uh, of, of uh, uh, protons and neutrons together in atomic nuclei. It's described by quantum chromodynamics that is about interactions between quarks and gluons. And then we have the weak nuclear force that is responsible for radioactive decay and nuclear fusion. It's described by quantum electrodynamics, which is about interactions between electrons and neutrinos and W and Z bosons. So these are the four forces of nature, and we seek to unify them all into a single framework. Such a framework will be able to describe the entire properties of the universe at any energy level, at energy, any energy scale, or any, uh, any, any scale of, of measurement. And yet, we have not been able to do this thus far. Some of the greatest physicists in the past 100 years have worked on this, and thus far, they have failed. Theory. So this is the standard model of particle physics that we have, and yet it does not incorporate the other two forces, and which is, which is a big problem. So this is something that is the holy grail, so to say, in particle physics and in theoretical physics, combining the forces, unifying the forces together in a grand unified theory, one of the biggest problems, unsolved problems out there. In so we look around us, we see matter everywhere. It's ordinary matter. And yet there is something, a more exotic substance called antimatter. Matter and antimatter are different kinds of particles in which some of the properties are opposite, like electric charge. And when man matter and antimatter come together, they annihilate each other and release pure energy. So according to physics, when the universe was born in the Big Bang, about 13.8 billion years ago, there should have been equal amounts of matter and antimatter produced. And yet, everything around us is just matter, ordinary matter. I am made of ordinary matter. We are all made of ordinary matter. Everything around us is ordinary matter. There is almost no antimatter anywhere in the universe that we see of. And physicists have come up with various uh, models to try and explain this, uh, such as CP violation, baryogenesis, leptogen leptogenesis, which are just some examples of the models. And yet, we don't have the answer. So matter, antimatter asymmetry, also called the baryon asymmetry problem, is one of the biggest unsolved problems in physics is the dimensionality of the universe. How many dimensions does the universe have? We experience the world in three dimensions, length, breadth, and height. We also experience something vaguely called time, the passage of time. So general relativity combines these four into a four-dimensional fabric called space-time. So in general relativity, we have a four-dimensional fabric of space-time. Kaluza-Klein theory tries to describe the universe in five dimensions. Then we have string theory, which requires 10 dimensions. You have M theory, which describes an 11 dimensional space time. Then you have bosonic string theory, which describes a 26 dimensional space time. And now there is a new theory out there. Uh, the Indian American scientist, Dr. Subhash Kak, Kak has come up with a new theory, which says that the universe could actually have E dimension. Mind bending is this. The universe may not be three dimensional or four dimensional. It may be E dimensional. It may be 2.7183 dimensional which is an extraordinarily mind-bending uh, thing to think about. And yet this theory does seem to explain the origin of gravity. It, so these are some of the very strong theories out there. Three dimensions, four dimensions, five dimensions, 10 dimensions, 11 dimensions, 26 dimensions, and now E dimensions. So we have very strong theories which propose these different uh, ways of looking at the universe and what the universe could be like, and yet we still don't have any actual evidence of any of these theories being correct. Next big question is how did life arise on our planet, Earth? 
So the solar system was formed 4.6 billion years ago. It was born out of a huge enormous cloud of dust and gas that came out of the death of a previously existing star. So our, sol our star, our solar system is a reincarnation of a previous stellar system. So this happened about 4.6 billion years ago and then the earth itself was formed 4.5 billion years ago. Initially it was a very hot planet with a toxic atmosphere and then something Wonderful happened, something fascinating happened. RNA, ribonucleic acid, emerged somehow on Earth and it hitched a ride inside lipid membranes. This was the first emergence of life, unicellular life. Eventually, uh, the RNA was replaced by DNA, deoxyribose nucleic acid, as the blueprint, as the genetic blueprint of life. So the question is, where did RNA come from? Where did DNA come from? Did they arise spontaneously on our planet in a, by a process called abiogenesis or were they seeded from somewhere else? So we know that asteroids which fall to earth, so when we examine them, we find that they, some of them contain amino acids, you know, organic compounds like called amino acids, which are the building blocks of proteins, which means that they are the building blocks of life itself. Is it possible that some asteroids, some space rocks may even contain DNA or RNA? Uh, we haven't found any evidence thus far, but the possibility cannot be uh, discarded. There is a theory out there called panspermia. It says that life or the components of life could be present all across the universe and they could be dispersed through uh, vectors such as space dust and uh, space rocks and asteroids and comets or even uh, unintentional contamination by human spacecraft or even alien spacecraft or via, via microorganisms or maybe even intentional. The next big question is, are we alone or is there other life out there? Look, uh, the Milky Way, our home galaxy, has about 100 billion stars. That is one uh, followed by 11 zeros. And there are approximately 100 billion galaxies in the observable universe. So if you multiply these numbers together, we get 1 raised to 22, which is 1 followed by 22 zeros, which is a mind-bogglingly enormous number. There are more stars in the observable universe than there are grains of sand on all the beaches on our planet. That's how many stars exist in the observable universe. So it is statistically extremely unlikely that the Earth is the only place in the universe where life exists. It is statistically extremely unlikely. It is possible it is uh, possible the, uh, prob uh, that the universe may be actually teeming with life. The possibility exists. Uh, some of that life may even be uh, intelligent life, human level intelligence, and some of that life may be superhuman level intelligence. But that's all speculation because thus far, scient see, scientists have been searching for this for decades. We have some of the best instruments looking at the sky 24 by 7 and searching for signs of extraterrestrial life. Thus far, we have found a grand total of zero. Nothing at all. So the question is, where are all the aliens? Where is everybody? And this is what's called the Fermi paradox. And we don't have the answer to this. So this is one of the big mysteries out there. Another big mystery is what is consciousness? Look, we all know that we are all individually conscious. All human beings have individual consciousness. All animals have consciousness. Whether it's cats or dogs or horses or tigers or lions or monkeys, we know they are conscious. So when we see it, we recognize it immediately. Yes, this, this thing is conscious. So consciousness exists. Nobody can deny that. But there is no scientific definition of consciousness. Science has not even been able to come up with a definition of what consciousness. consciousness. What about elephants? What about, what about rabbits? What about ants? Even microorganisms and bacteria are aware of their surroundings and environment and they proactively take measures to hunt down nutrition and to escape from predators. So they also have some level of awareness or consciousness. Is it possible that there is an enormous consciousness that permeates the universe on a universal scale? That's also one of the open questions. And Consciousness is becoming uh, even more relevant these days. It's one of the big mysteries that has a certain place in quantum mechanics itself. But nowadays with the emergence of AI, artificial intelligence, the question of consciousness has become even more relevant and to some extent a little bit urgent. Can machines be conscious? Can AIs be conscious? 
Is it possible that some AIs may already be conscious? These are the questions that computer scientists are grappling with, neuroscientists are grappling with, and physicists working in the on the foundations of quantum mechanics are grappling. What is the ultimate fate of the universe? The universe is about 13.8 billion years old. That's how long it's been since the, since the Big Bang. What is going to be the ultimate phase of fate of the universe? So according to whatever our understanding is of cosmology and the way the universe is progressing, it looks like the universe is going to keep on expanding and the expansion of the universe is going to keep on accelerating because of dark energy. So there are several scenarios that are possible depending on how much energy and mass is in the universe and what is the kind of mass and energy. The one scenario is the big rip. There is something called the big freeze scenario, the big rip scenario and the big... This is one of the big mysteries in the universe today. Next please. So that brings us to the conclusion of, of this talk. I hope I have... Uh, illuminated some light on the big mysteries of the cosmos, some of the big mysteries that are unsolved, some of the mysteries that keep scientists awake at night. I hope you understand that we know almost next to nothing about the universe. 95% of the universe is dark. So it's very important that there is continuous funding for science, uh, science scientific exploration and, and research so that we are able to throw light on this. It's also important to understand that it, we may never be able to solve these mysteries and get all the answers, but the pursuit of knowledge is a worthwhile pursuit in itself. And it's something that has driven scientists and, and intellectuals and philosophers and scholars throughout history. So these are some of the big mysteries of the universe. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you.